near the entrance of Zion National Park amongst these picturesque cliff walls of sandstone behind me. Travelers from around the world come here to witness the sheer beauty and grandeur of Mother Nature at her finest. But today, we're talking about a different type of adventure or outdoor enthusiast. I'm talking about men who somehow, when they see these rock walls and cliff outcroppings, see an opportunity to descend lines on their mountain bikes at high rates of speed while performing the most progressive tricks in their sport. And they get to do so on a brand new canvas, as for the first time in six years, this event takes place on a brand new venue. This, my friends, is Rampage, and you, of course, are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Hey everybody, Sal Masekela here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you to Southern Utah and the genesis of freeride mountain biking. Now this season, we've traveled to the slopes of Whistler in British Columbia and the medieval streets of Nuremberg, Germany. But today, we have arrived near Virgin, Utah for the big granddaddy Red Bull Rampage. This marks the final stop on the FMB Diamond Series Tour, which means at the end of this day, we're gonna have a 2014 champion. But between us and that crowning of a new champion lies a treacherous course sitting under this blistering Utah sun, located on a new site just on the backside of last year's event. The event organizers, they wanted it, the riders called for it, and you, the fans, demanded it. So here we are, the first venue change since 2008. New uncharted waters and territory, and the riders in a new arena, which means you can only imagine what they're gonna do with a brand new, fresh slate. We are all set for the first runs of the finals. Guys, I gotta say, this is probably the heaviest event in all of action sports. Thanks, Sal. Well, in the world of action sports, it does not get much more organic than this. We have put Mother Nature on center stage with a few man-made tweaks, but those man-made tweaks, Kenan, are serious business. This is an incredible new venue. It's the only third time that Rampage has changed venues. And this particular one is extremely chock full of some organic hits or natural hits, as well as some of the man-made features, the largest of them being 73 feet from the start to the finish or takeoff to landing. If you make a mistake, you'll be hanging out with a rattlesnake in the bottom of a canyon. So the organizers have given us a new course. It is brand new for the riders, also for the judges. For more on that, we check in with a fourth member of our broadcast team. Here's Tina Dixon. Hey guys, I am now standing mid-mountain, and the format for the event is simple. Each rider gets two runs, the best score counts, but the judging for the event is not so simple. So I'm now here with head judge Paul Rack. And Paul, what are the steps you take to help you guys understand what these riders have to deal with? couple of things actually we show up here a little early couple of days and we uh, walk the whole course we walk at top to bottom check out all their lines look at their drops their landings put ourselves into their shoes and see what's like doable what's crazy what's pretty safe and pretty much go from there and spectators are always looking for backflips and tricks but this is all about big mountain as well so how do you guys balance that judging out yeah absolutely we uh, pretty much use a certain criteria we look at the line choice the flow the fluidity the tricks and the amplitude and pretty much put it all together and see which guys are doing more of that or adding a little bit extra and killing it. It's very busy for you guys, so thanks for your time. I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Tina. So it is go time in Virgin, Utah. Red Bull Rampage version 2014. We'll kick things off with Carson Stortz, the 21-year-old out of Bend, Oregon. You know, he started riding at two and a half years old. 
That's insane. And started jumping at about four, so he knows what he needs to do. Here we go. First run for Carson Storch here at Rampage. He's taking that ridge line, as we'll see this first group of riders doing. A little bit slower. Now, he's a slope style guy, but did a good job to get himself into the finals here at Rampage. So a great job of the upper section by Storch, and now it gets a little more difficult. The speed starts to pick up. And a great perspective coming from that GoPro camera. Yes, oh. huge backflip, and he gets a little cork in there, setting him up for that next line, and look, right into the hip, and now he's dropping in to this extremely fast section. Pitcher perfect flow so far for Carson Storch. So again, judges are going to look for those tricks up at the top. If you're doing tricks way up top, that ups the amplitude and difficulty. Nice natural drops here. Look at the speed he's carrying through. Yes, suicide, no hander on the GoPro, step down. So he's bringing that slope style element into this big mountain run. Judges love it, nice, no footed can can't get in a little bit Indian air on that. Little style on the next set of rhythm. And that's another thing I have to point out to everyone at home, just joining us now, <laughs> huge back flip, I love it. But you gotta keep your rhythm, that's the flow, you don't wanna make a mistake. Such a good run from Storch. Flow and fluidity. He got the tricks in there and some serious amplitude. That was amazing, Kenan. What happened in that run? Yeah, that is where we got to start. You know, slope style rider doing a trick at the top of the course. Huge, great setting on this backflip. This guy is a slope style rider. And like I said, not an easy thing to do with some of these natural hits. So he's doing a fantastic job today. So 21-year-old Carson Storch out of Bend, Oregon. His first run score will be impressive, a 69-2-5. He seems to be okay with that. He'll look to run number two and see if he can up the ante. Here he is, 18 years old, our youngest competitor, Tom Van Steenbergen. You really have to take into consideration just what these riders have been asked to do in this competition. They're riding on a very exposed piece of geography here, Todd. And Steenbergen, as you note, is only his second year as he drops on into the faster portion of his line. Predetermined destination for Steenbergen, but can he pull off all the tricks he's planning? Well, he's got some great style. He whipped it onto the face of that landing as he mm. moves down towards the canyon gap. Well, before that, he's going to take this line, and this is where the speed's really going to pick up. There oh, it man, is. he's going front ways. Oh, no. And a huge crash by the 18-year-old Tom Van Steenbergen, but he did go for it. He did, and you know, he had a great run building here. He jumps this double and gets himself whipped as he puts himself into position for heading over this county gap. Initiates the front flip. Watch the landing. This is where things go wrong. Back wheel, and then he just gets flung over the bars. And his body, unfortunately, has been treated like a rag doll. You can certainly get into some problems with whiplash from just the immensity and the force of this landing. We jump on board. And you can see his POV as he goes down and just gets flung over the bars. As we take a look at the FMB Diamond Series leaderboard, Brandon Semenuk is your leader. Now, we've talked about this coming into this event. Brandon really controls his own destiny. He just needs to place in the top five, and the title is his. But Brett Reeder, he can upset the apple cart in a big way if he can get the victory. And hope that Semenuk finishes out of the top five, then it will be Brett Reeder that takes him the title. An accomplished rider, compressed four vertebrae last year at a competition in France, and now he is back and with a vengeance. And Kenan, I'm sure he's thinking about that FMB Diamond Series and how nice it would be to get that title, but right now he's got to focus completely on this mountain. Definitely good analysis there, Todd. You know, you don't think about anything except for the, the terrain in front of you. Nice. New line from Brett here, carving his line out. He's a slope style guy that is really impressed. A lot of riders, oh. this is a huge backflip off this drop. That's what I'm talking about, into a 360 over a hip step up. 
Wow, this is an incredible run. If he makes it all the way down, we're gonna see a new leader just based on this line and these tricks alone. And it's still a lot of course to go. Brett Reeder just absolutely tearing up the course here at Rampage. A rider who's come back from a horrific back injury just to be throwing down here. This is bravery at a whole nother level. No handed backflip over the hip and he connects. And if Brett Reader's doctor is out watching right now, <laughs> my apologies, sir. You probably did some great work on this young man, and he has put his body in harm's way yet again. That was a stellar performance on run one. That was all about control. I've never seen anyone backflip such a crazy blind, huge step down at a Rampage event, and then thread that into a 360 on a step up hip. So amazing, great run. I will be flabbergasted if he is not our new leader. And Brett Reader yeah. will go into first place, an 88.5 for the Canadian. Well, right now it's Cam Zink versus the line he's built down the mountain, which in my opinion is hands down one of the rowdiest ways to the finished corral. If Cam's going to beat his good friend defending champion Kyle Strait, our current leader Brett Reeder, and the rest of the competitors, he's going to have to survive the line he's constructed here today. So here we go, the 2010 champion, two-time best trick winner, Cam Zink, on course for his first of two runs. And keep your eyes open, Cam is famous for tricking some of the biggest jumps and drops in the history of the sport. And look at how he chooses to get into the run. Look at where he is going. This is a nail biter if I've ever seen one. What a chess game he's playing with the mountain. As he makes his way down through this line. Such a precarious line for Cam Zink. Get ready for a big drop. Cam really choosing to use these natural features. Where's where he takes off? A 360! Oh my gosh, he pulls it! This was the trick that everyone was talking about in practice. Insane, choosing to get on that fire road to get to his next section. But man, what a risky move. So impressive. The pitcher of technical single track riding and still time to high five the fans. Cam Zeke out of Reno, Nevada, absolutely laying down a technical masterpiece. Nice big whip over that Polaris razor hip. Now, Kennedy, he does not have the trickery. He did not hit the Red Bull oh. Canyon Gap or the GoPro step down, but what he did do on that upper section was insane. Well, you know, to hit those obstacles, you have to choose a line to get to them. He chose a line that was so incredibly difficult just to ride down. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights. Because of that 360 off the cliff, it's definitely gonna help his score, but remember, just getting to this. Most riders are going through that notch. He sends a three off of a natural cliff. You know, in years past, he's done 360s off big obstacles, but they were man-made. This is a natural feature that he threw. This is worth a second and even a third look. The 360 blind with a drop. That is insane. Should be a decent score for him. And the score for Zink at 89.50. Wow. So Cameron Zink impresses the judges and he moves into first. What a run by Zink and he's standing by with Tina. And Cam Zink, you dropped in and went near vertical and then you topped it off with that 360 off that huge drop. Walk us through that top section. The top section is extremely scary and Kyle and I hit it once, but only from kind of halfway in. And I was a bit nervous from up top, but as soon as I dropped in, I could tell that I had my speed under control and then Right at the end, I was like, oh, still going a little fast, but held on to it. And then trying to breathe throughout the middle section, which, is, which isn't even like anything easy. So I'm trying to like think about the three while I'm doing the whole middle part, which is still kind of gnarly. And then I uh, popped the slowest three in my life because it's a, it's a creeper. And people say that you ride fearless and it looks like it. Is there any fear with you? Absolutely. I mean, by the time I drop in, the fear is pretty much gone. But I mean, you kind of a mental weirdo if you don't get scared of anything it's your your brain you know trying to keep you from dying i guess but 
We're, uh, once, once you drop in, you're, you're going to be hindered and your riding's going to suffer if you're, if you're scared. So be scared beforehand, assess it, and then once you figure out you're going to do it, just ride. What a first run. Thank you. Thanks, Tina. Let's go back to the top for our next rider. You are looking at the defending champion, Kyle Strait, 27 years of age, coming to us by way of Costa Mesa, California. But here we go, straight off as the defending champion. You see he's got that wheel locked up because he is extremely exposed here. One wrong move, and you see what the results would be. Dropping into a nice, I mean, that is almost a vertical drop he just went down. Similar line, what we saw just moments ago from Cam Zink, our leader, who has an 89.5. Nice style. Great style, although, I mean, really flowy here as he makes his way down. Lots of control, Kyle's got it. He's got to throw some bigger moves, though. Lots of moto whipping. drop of the day and another what? Oh, no. this is the pedal but what a trick by straight <laughs> Yeehaw. so the defending champion goes superman at the bottom off the polaris razor hip jump and a massive drop up towards the top. And Kenan, that might be the fastest run of the day. You think about how quickly he got down, straight-lined it almost. Oh, yeah, these two guys, Cam Zane, Kyle Strait, they're buddies. They love to ride together. They definitely planned out a lot of their runs together. You can see that they were similar here. But man, what a big jump. This drop down is insane. 76 feet about from takeoff to landing and then sets himself up for the Polaris Razor Jump. Watch the feet come off. We'll talk about Superman, no problem. He is a man of steel right here as he rides that steel horse all the way down the mountain. So Kyle straight with an impressive first run here at Red Bull Rampage, the defending champion. The score comes in on run number one. It is an 85.5, so straight in the podium position. And remember, he still has one more run as we check in with Tina Dixon. Well, Kyle, you had that huge drop near the end. What was going through your mind? Because you did not practice that. Um, I don't know. I guess I needed something to uh, leave the finals. and kind of have something to think about at the top because uh, usually I have to think about quite a bit that I haven't done before. So kind of just left that to uh, no practice on it and it worked out pretty well and pretty much dialed things in for the second run, hopefully. And you and Cam are sharing that top line. I know you guys are really close friends. How much are you feeding off each other? Well, I mean, it's it's almost like an unspoken feeding, kind of like I know exactly what he's thinking and, and uh, he knows what I'm thinking and kind of just makes it really easy out there. I'm like, how are you feeling? He's like, good. I'm like, he asked me how I'm feeling, I'm good, and we're good to go, you know, and kind of feeling vibes. All right, well, you got one more run. Best of luck, guys. Thank you, Tina. As we take a look at the leaderboard as it stands right now in the midst of run number one, Kyle Strait is your defending champion. He sits in third place with an impressive 85.50. The Canadian Brett Reader's in second, and your leader is Cameron Zink with an 89.50. But remember, our format, Kenan, it's two runs. We only keep your best score. So this is the hors d'oeuvre of the main course that's still to come. At the top of the course is Brandon Seminuk out of Squamish, Canada, 23 years of age. He leads the FMB Diamond Series. If he finishes in the top five here at Rampage, the title is his. Well, here's the thing about Brandon now. He's won this event before, but he's also exploded at this event. So it really is his to lose. So Seminick taking his time, finding another oh. very technical line, and look at this. What is he doing? Big drop. Oh. Now he's got a lot of speed to carry into scrub, too. Oh, man. What an incredible way he has chosen down. Remember. Absolute mastery of that bike and his line. Right, and he's also a slope-style shredder as well, so he can throw down some tricks. And he'll be getting to them soon. <laughs> 360, big three, and he connects! 
it down. It has been a battle between him and Reader on the Diamond Series Tour. Can can backflip over the Polaris Razor hip. It looks like we're going full pull. No hander over that hip step up. He's making his way down. We've got a clean run from Seminuk. So Seminuk really applying the pressure to our leaders. Cam Zink leads the way with an 89.5, but Seminuk laid down a very technical run, and I don't think the landing's getting much smoother than what he just threw down, especially on that razor hip. I said at the top that he is the best overall rider in my opinion, and here's why. He can ride the big mountain terrain. No problem, he's throwing a 360. You saw Cam Zink do a big move like this as well. Well, Brandon did it here and kept the flow going from top to bottom on an extremely difficult line. Flow is so important to the judges. This is a difficult venue. People are trying to figure it out this year. He throws in a can-can backflip over that hip, but then again, threads it to a no-handed. Top to bottom, a solid run. This could potentially be another lead change. So the 2008 champion of Rampage gets an 88 even, so Seminit goes into third place, a podium position with still one run to go. Let's go down to Tina Dixon. Well, Brandon, the last two years here at Rampage, you haven't even finished, so how redeeming is it just to go from top to bottom, especially with the line that you had? Yeah, it feels great. Like, the last couple years kind of sucked, and I was pretty confident in that line, just like I was in this, and, you know, there's always that little thing in the back of your head, like, oh, you could mess up on the dumbest thing, and, yeah, it feels great to get to the bottom and get a score on the board. And the builders, you guys have been out here about two weeks now, and they put a lot of dedication to your line. How proud are you of those guys? Oh, my builders are the best like so stoked there's just like coming down into the corral and like having them there and they're just like so happy like big smiles on their face like the most rewarding part so it's pretty awesome well first run top to bottom you got another one best of luck yeah for sure thank you all right guys thanks tina so with just a few riders left in run number one here's what it looks like on the leaderboard semina holding down third with that 88 on his first run brett reader sits in second place and cam zinc the american leading the way with an 89.50 lakondagi set to drop in on run number one we talked about him, Kenan. Three, this guy is going to go two, big, or he's probably one. going to end up in the medical tent. Where is he going? He is a charger, and he's set up for that big drop. Nice job. Look at his speed, and he's got also a very big jump coming up here. Massive step down. And he connects perfectly. Wow. Look at the speed. Yep, and he's carrying it all the way through. An amazing shot coming to us from the GoPro cam. Big backflip as he looks for the landing, so smooth. Similar line to Seminuk. The 25-year-old from Barcelona, Spain, Andreu Lacandegui, with a full pole on run number one. He has made it very clear he does not want to finish in fourth. He does not want to finish in third. He wants the victory here at Rampage. So he chooses to go kind of fast up top here, which surprised me, actually, when he sets up for this drop. Now, this is pure vertical. He is totally off the mountain. And then it's get down into this rhythm section that he crafted on the side of Mount Rampage here. But it's all about this huge drop that led him into the Polaris Razor hip. We've got a new leader, Andreo Lacondagui, with a 95.25. He is well out in front, and he's standing by with Tina Dixon. Well, Andreo has been to Rampage and taken fourth three times before, but you just took the lead with that run, a 95.25, and you said it was all or nothing. What kind of commitment did you give? Yeah, well, I, since I got here, I know what I wanted to do this year, and that's why I picked up that line. I just wanted to go fast and straight down, and 
and that's what it did. It took a, it was a super hard week working on the line and getting everything ready and I seen friends getting hurt and everything and it was it wasn't easy but I was there and I put it together, made it to the bottom, and I'm sitting on first now and see how it goes. Yeah, those that was just run one. Run two is coming up. What can we expect? Is there anything left in the bag? There's always stuff left in the bag and and I just really hope that I don't need to get it out there. So I'm just gonna wait. I'm on a good position. I'm starting last, so I'm gonna get to see everyone and step it up if I need to. Yep, there's some strategy. Well it was fast and big and great first run. Thank you. Guys. Thanks. So with Lacondigi out in front with a 95-2-5, the bar has certainly been raised almost to the level of our start house as Paul Bastagosia takes a look down and knows exactly what he needs to do. Now, Ken, we've talked about this before. These guys do not get freaked out, obviously, by heights, by the death-defying approach they're going to take to the sport, and he can't be rattled now by what Lacondigi just did. No, nope, but you can see the way he's pointing. He pointed in a completely opposite direction for his line, so he's coming off the left side of our, our course here, viewers left, and that is the Ridge One. And he is now charging down it. Some nice hits here, lots of speed, and a lot of distance on that as well. So something different for the judges to look at here from the man they call Paul Bass. Get into a rhythm, nice flow, beautiful hip. It's a kind of a step down hip as you head to the left. We're gonna see some big drops coming down this midsection though. Yeah, big jump, and you know what's next? It's that razor hip, and he does a Superman seat grab, and they have so much time in the air, it's almost a two-stage trick. So the question now for the judges, Kenan, is do the judges like what they saw up at the top as he took a different line, and you got to give him a credit for originality, but was there enough there to really score points? You know what? I think the judges are really liking that Mid ridge, the dropping in off Mount Rampage straight down because that's the most treacherous, the treacherous way down. It's the most dangerous line. Doesn't get fully extended. It wasn't the flowiest Superman seat grab the judges have seen that I've seen. So you really want to extend and flow that trick out. It's all one movement. And the score coming now for Paul Bastagosia, the man they call Paul Bass. His score on run number one will be a 76.5. Has him in the top 10, currently in eighth place, as he will look to run number two. After one run, it is Brett Reeder still in third place with an 88.5. Cam Zink of the USA in second, 89.5. And everyone will be chasing Andreo Lacondigi of Spain and his 95.5. For more on what we can expect from run number two, let's check in with Tina. Tom Van Steenbergen, the youngest competitor out here, just going for it on that canyon gap with a front flip and fell. How are you right now? I'm really sore, but super happy to walk away from that. I didn't expect to just get up and be fine, but I am, so I'm stoked. Well, we see you here. You've got the tape on your shoulder. We're between runs. Are you thinking about taking a second run? I was thinking about it, but I'm too sore to walk right now, so I'm probably not going to do that. Just save myself for whatever's next. As a rider, when you look up at this mountain, what do you think we're going to see from these guys? I think some of the riders may have been taking it a bit easy in the first run just to get down the mountain, and the second runs are going to be even crazier, I think, so I'm super excited to watch. And bummed I'm not riding, but glad I'm okay. Take some time. Best of luck with your recovery, and thanks for speaking with us. Thanks. All right, guys. Next up, we've got Kelly McGarry, whose Canyon Gap backflip at last year's Rampage made him a bit of an internet sensation. Tina Dixon was able to catch up with him earlier in the week. Well, in 2013, Kelly McGarry's run included that giant backflip over the Canyon Gap. The footage was seen all over the map, and you won the People's Choice Award. What kind of impact did that have on you? Um, yeah, I mean, last year's results, it's, it's been great for my career. You know, like, uh, I think the... The GoPro footage is 21 million or something views, and I um, mean, yeah, it's been really helpful for sponsors, and then a lot of people uh, notice what I'm doing, so I'm, I'm really stoked, and uh, yeah, it was a good year last year, so I'm looking forward to this year. 
And earlier in practice, though, we saw you take a huge spill. How was the bike? What happened to it? And then most importantly, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I had a bit of a crash in practice there. I was pretty bummed about it. Um, my, my rims kind of collapsed when I landed, overshot landing a bit, and yeah, I, I took a hell of a spill. Best of luck. I know a lot of people are looking forward to seeing your line and your run. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Tina. So a devastating crash for Kelly in practice. That has to shake up the confidence just a little bit. But Rampage only happens once a year. Will Kelly McGarry overcome his demons here today and defend his title as having one of the biggest backflips in the business? We saw him jump it straight. Thing is, is he going to play it safe today and just make it down the hill, or does he want to go for a win? 32 years of age, he's been at this game for a long time. You can always tell him by the flowing locks. Currently, McGarry sitting in 11th place. And first run score, 73.25. The mark he's trying to beat, put up by Spain's Lacondegui, a 95.25. Again, pointing out uh, McGarry's style. He's such a large rider. Makes that bike look like a BMX bike. It's really cool to see him flick it around. As he traverses right now, he's going to make a big drop here. He's got to get over this canyon gap. And he does go for the backflip. But it, oh! The canyon gap grabs another rider. And McCarry amazingly able to walk away. Oh. Kenneth, from the get-go, you could tell he just did not have the speed. And I was thinking, he's going to maybe straighter this thing, but he still goes for the backflip. Let's take a look back at what went wrong. He completed the rotation just in the nick of time. There it is. Boom. Oh, that is just incredible power for him to be able to not become one with the handlebars. Again, watch as he lands here. Watch how his body reacts. Oh, he just crumples, and you can see the wheel completely tacoed. It's incredible. You know, he's from New Zealand. They have an animal called the Weta. This dude is as tough as a Weta. It's one of the toughest organisms on Earth, and in my opinion, McGarry is the new toughest organism on Earth. Well, fortunately for him, the bike did what it was supposed to do. He was able to walk away and a smile on his face. Not so much for the bike. And we have seen our share of amazing wrecks. Fortunately, so far, nothing too serious. But Kenan, I'm telling you, these guys are putting technology, their bodies, and their bikes to an absolute max. Let's not also forget the psyche of these guys. I mean, you really have to test your mental strength. As all, also, when you drop into such a course as the Red Bull Rampage, so Golovich currently sitting in 16th place. He has a 63 in our two-run format where we only keep your best score. Your leader right now, Andrea Lacondegui of Spain with a 95.25. They call him Gully, and he is one of the guys to watch because, mark my words, there's going to be something big pulled out by Jeff. Jeff Golovich making his way down through this section, crisscrossing it through through the switchback, setting it for something here. Looks a little tentative as he sets himself up. As Gulovich carefully picks his way through these craggy rocks, trying to find his line, and he's carrying a lot of speed. What's he going to do with this speed? Suicide no-hander gets his knees locked on that seat. He scrubs a little bit of speed here as he rides along that goat path. Nice. You ask any mountain bike rider what their what the most prestigious win in freeride mountain biking is, and they're going to say Red Bull Rampage. So, you know, it's about making a name for themselves in this venue. If you could put a win at Rampage on your resume, that is certainly saying something. So Golovich with a full pole from top to bottom, very technical at the top, a lot of speed in the middle, and then tried to maximize as many tricks as he could at the bottom. Back up top, he's going through a four-foot wide notch in those two boulders as he drops down. That's uh, not an easy thing to do. Mountain bike handlebars are kind of wide, so you got to be careful not to get caught up on it. So the lower section of his run, he opted not to hit any man-made features as he did in the first run. So 
What he did opt to do is just throw his leg over to the side, making like a rocket there, a little can-can action. Remember, Golovich was sitting on a 63, but he does bump up a little bit, picks up a 66. Back to the top we go. Our next rider is now in the start gate. Five very talented Canadians made the final here. Mitch Chuby is one of them out of Langley, Canada, just 25 years of age. Mitch Chuby, three, two, one. Chuby now gets the opportunity to ride a second run. He's currently sitting on a 41.5. So, Ken, a lot of work for the Canadian Chuby as he's trying to track down Lacondigie's 95.25. The big thing is, you know as well as a professional riders, you have to ride within yourself. Yeah, definitely. You got to make sure that you got those nerves under control, that you're picking a line and you're confident in that line. And he's wow. really confident here. Uh, Backflip up on the top section, but he bonks a tiny bit. The judges are watching that. He's got to stay on point for the rest of this run. A little foot dab will cost you a tad. Going up and around on that wall ride, or cliff ride, if you will. I like that. It's a little something different. That's the way he's actually scrubbing speed for that second drop. Very unique line. And this will also hurt his flow score. This is something the judges don't like to see. They're not going to penalize you for pedaling, but if you have to pedal a lot to get a lot of speed, they're going to look at it and say, dude, there's plenty of speed to be found out here. You just got to tap the right line. Yeah, a little bit of suicide no-hander there, and he's finishing things up with almost a dead sailor. You know, I know he wanted to do more on that hip. And to go back to your point about the pedaling, you know, sitting in the judges' meeting, the judges said, well, you know, we're really not going to penalize the guys for that because it's a new venue, and we want to see them hit all aspects of their run. That being said, how do you how can you gauge it when you're looking at other riders who right. aren't you know they're they're flowing top to bottom they've chosen a better line so their line score is going to reflect that so mitch chuby with a very technical start to his second run yeah definitely you know he comes right down we saw him throw that backflip right over it you know in this top section and a great perspective coming from that gopro camera Another suicide no-hander out of him, and a big hit on this Polaris Razor hip, but unfortunately the trick just wasn't as, as big a showstopper as he needed. So Chuby's score coming in, and he will crack the top 10, a 76.25. So Chuby into the top 10 as we take a look at the leaderboard so far here in run number two. It is Brett Reeder sitting in third, then Cameron Zeke and Andrea Lacondigi on top with a 95.25. Brett Reeder spent last season on the sidelines with a broken back. Now just one year later, he's back and a true force to be reckoned with. Now, Reeder sits in third place in the FMB Diamond Series. He needs to win this event and have Brandon Semenuk finish out of the top five for a shot at the overall title. The way Brett is riding, though, Todd, I've got to tell you, I think that he can actually make an impact here and move up that podium. Look at the line he's taking. Wow. Quick bunny hop off of a vertical drop. He's got so much control. 21-year-old Brett Reeder out of Canada, and he is carrying some serious heat. Access 360, so dialed, similar to the first run, linking things together. But towards the end, what will he do to improve on that score? Back flip to 360 for the Canadian who's trying to track down not only a win here at Rampage, but an FMB Diamond Series title. Hitting the razor hip, doesn't get the no-handed flip though. So if we're comparing the first run to the second, this run is going to be the lower scoring one. With so, that missed no-hander, that's, that's gonna be what causes it to be lower score than the first one. Getting things down here and he throws it in a backflip. How do you do a backflip off this drop? You see he gets his rear of his body over the back of that bicycle and he's just spotting that landing as soon as he can because it's blind, it's hucking and hoping. Watch this, watch the handlebars. He wants to bring them to his lap, but he doesn't get connected there. So he's like, you know what? 
not taking the hands off this time. Let's stay safe. But because of that, I feel this will be a lower scoring run. So, Kenny, you're right. The 88-5-0 is what he'll have to hold on to. The 87 does him no good. And with Brett not taking the lead and Brandon still in the top five, that will give Semenuk his third FMB Diamond Series win. An amazing accomplishment, but it's no time for celebration as he has one more run and is just off the podium. You are looking at the defending champion, Kyle Strait, winner last year, and his good friend, Cam Zink. Now, Cam Zink is just 28 years of age from the Reno, Nevada area. He is currently in second place, sitting on an 89.50, but this guy's resume is steep. 2013 Red Bull Rampage, third place, but he picked up the best trick award. 2014 Crankworks France, seed and style winner. And here he is now, the 2010 champion of Rampage, going for it. The sickest line I've seen of the day. Look at how he drops into this vertical portion. We're asking a lot of Cam Zink. He's got to come back down, and he's got to spin a 360 off the biggest natural face on the course. Oh, getting a little front wheel there. All these drops are huge. This is it. Oh, yeah, he, he drags a foot, but he's OK. That's all right when you're dropping 50 feet. Again, not hitting that canyon that he built, just doesn't have the speed or the run up. So he's gonna charge along this fire road. But I think this is what's hurting his score. He's gotta do something so big on this bottom portion to bookend this run. Once again, Cam Zink having time to give high fives to the fans mid-mountain. Now he's gonna really start to get warmed up. Real focused as we go into the hip. But nothing, he just straight does air. a straight air. Well, it's a hip, so it's hard to do a straight air, but he whips it a little bit. Man, that's surprising. But you know what, maybe Zink is just saying, you know, maybe I'll get best trick again, and that's cool with me, because last year, his video went viral also. So the day is done for Cam Zink of the USA, sitting on an 89.5, currently in second place. The fans love it, the fellow riders love it, Zink doesn't look like he's too thrilled, not nearly as amped up as he was after run number one. And let's have another look at that and see what went wrong. There you see the 360 and he connects, over rotates just a little bit. That's what sent that right foot off the pedal. The Polaris razor hip, he didn't do much on it. I don't know what he had planned. This, in my opinion, is an afterthought. You know, it's probably pumped too hard and realized, ah, you know what? I'm not going to pull anything off of it. Very similar run to what Cam Zink threw down in run number one, and that gave him an 89.5. Run number two, an 89. So he will hold on to run one, 89.50, and the frustration on his face of what could have been. A sign of relief from our current leader, Andrea Lacondegui. But our top riders still to come, like this gentleman, 2004 and 2013 champion, Kyle Strait out of Orange County, California. Best friends with Cam Zink. They share recon, they share notes, talk to each other across the radio of what to expect. Now, Strait is sitting on an 85.50, which has him in the top five. Locks up that back wheel. He's taking that similar line that Zink took. Look at this. Now he's got to quickly turn to the right to get his wheels connecting to that vertical drop. Millions of years of carving is what Mother Nature did. And these guys come out here and they carve their own lives lines in just a little bit. Do you see how he clipped that on the back wheel? That could have been really gnarly if he went over the bars. Suicide no-hander, big drop. He gets a little shake in there, but not stirred. He is still charging. Serious speed. speed. Get back on there, brother, yes. Big Superman, he gets back on, no worries. Kyle Strait will not wind up a fossil here today. Kyle Strait with a ton of speed on the second half of that course. Comes in with a front nose manual and his buddy's there to greet him. Cam Zeke, Kyle Strait, never too far apart.
from Kyle straight on the second run. The better of the two, in my opinion. So he does a suicide no-hander off this tremendous drop. It's about a 70-foot drop. Superman gets back on, no worries. And the score is coming in now for the defending champion, Kyle Strait. What will the judges give him? And it's an 89, so Kyle Strait has found himself onto the podium. But will it stand up? If there is any rider that knows how to beat a score like that, it's our next competitor, our final competitor, the 2010 champion, and now a three-time winner of the FMB World Tour. This is Brandon Semenuk. And you'll notice the way he drops into this is going to be very different than many of the other riders. His guys have been spending the last week perfecting this line, so you know he wants to get things dialed today. The final competitor to drop in here out of Squamish, British Columbia. He's sitting on an 88, but he needs a 95.25 to take the lead. Setting up for a big drop here. Look at this as he just lets off the brakes. Suicide no-hander, and look at speed, man. Just getting into this rhythm section. Nice style over that hip. Lots of speed in control. Judges love it when the riders are just charging, riding on the edge of control, and that's exactly what he was doing here as he makes his way to this next drop. Big opposite 360 here. The previous run, he rotated to the left. This time, he's heading to the right. Nice style off this drop, making his way to the Polaris. Razor hip, a can't can backflip. He's dialed right now. Wow, no-hander gets that tuck in there as the run comes to a close. So a great job by Brandon Semenuk of Canada. The question is, did he do enough? He needs a 95.25 to take the win and the lead. Well, he's a rider who definitely had an original line, which the judges like. Watch the top drop here. He's got the brakes on, and he just decides he's got to let him go. And hopefully, he's got enough speed to make it to that landing, and he did. But that is a very incredible jump. And then the final drop, natural drop, into the Polaris, razor hip. Look at the set, can-can backflip, brings it back down, and then he threads it right into a tuck no-hander. So. He went top to bottom, stayed rubber side down. Original lines should be a decent score for him. Well, when you think of the elevation that he covered and the amount of time, an amazing run by Brandon Semenuk as we wait for the score. It's an 89.25, so Semenuk will grab third. Andreo Lacondagi is your winner. What a performance. And Tina's standing by with Brandon. And Brandon, it was enough to bump up into that podium third spot. How would you compare that second run to the first? Uh, the second run was definitely way better. Just kind of upped a couple tricks and rode a little faster, so did what I wanted and pretty happy. And with your performance here at Rampage, you have now sealed the FMB Diamond Series Championship. What does that represent to you? It's a series of events, the five stops, including slope style and finishing up in big mountain venues like this. Um, yeah, to take an overall is obviously pretty sweet in any sport, but uh, I'm, I'm more stoked on just doing well at each event and just happened to work out and it finished up with Rampage. Congratulations. Thanks, so Thanks, Tina. So the final results look like this. 2014 Red Bull Rampage. Andreu Lacondigui, your winner. Cam Zink, Brandon Semenuk, but great performances all the way down. Kyle Strait, a former champion. Brett Reeder in the running as well. In the end, it's Spain's Andreo Lacondigui who gets it done a 95.25 on his first run of this two-run format, and he is your champion, and he's now standing by with Tina Dixon. Andreo, the last three times you were here at Rampage, you finished in fourth spot just off the podium, but now it's a different story on top of the podium. What does this win finally mean to you? Yeah, I'm super happy. As you said, I got four of the, the last three years, and, and this year coming in here, I... I knew that I was gonna take like whatever it took to like get on the top and since I got here I seen the line and I knew that I was gonna go off the thing on the top and and this week has been it's been just crazy like the building, the, the stress with the weather and the wind and I don't know, I just got like a lot of help with like all my building crew and friends and 
I'm super happy. Like, bike has been amazing, and I'm just stoked that it worked for me. And but I'm just stoked, really stoked. Well, yeah, and this year you spent your time focusing on this event. How key was that for you? Yeah, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't ride my hardtail or I didn't go any, like anywhere else than, than on my big bike this year. I just rode the fast series the whole year. I rode big jumps the whole year. I've been going, I've been going big the whole year, getting ready for this and to finally like get here and walk away with first is just amazing. It's like gold like accomplished and dream come true for sure. Enjoy this, the 2014 Rampage champion. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Tina. This was hands down the craziest event in the history of Rampage. So many amazing top to bottom runs, but for the craziest trick, it goes to Cam Zink, who receives our Red Bull signature moment. Cam is known for tricking big drops, but has been criticized for only doing his massive spins and flips off wooden features. This year, he silenced all the critics with a dirt-to-dirt -dirt drop that is likely the biggest natural drop ever spun. And if anyone thought it was luck, Cam executed the trick in both runs. Congratulations to Cam Zink on taking his second back-to-back -back Red Bull signature moment here at Rampage. Congratulations to Cam Zink, and congratulations to our winner, Andrea Lacondegui. Kenan, an amazing event. Rampage never disappoints. It's my favorite event of the year. These guys are consistently pushing the boundaries of what is possible on these mountain bikes. And hey, this is not a bad view to be surrounded by either. No question about it, and our thanks to all the hardworking folks that make this possible. And with that, we send it over to Sal Masakela. Thanks to you guys for joining us here from the edge of the majestic Zion National Park near Virgin, Utah. We had massive expectations coming here to this new venue at Red Bull Rampage. And you know what? This event over delivered. I am continuously blown away by what these athletes can do with their big mountain riding with so much on the line, continuing to push this amazing sport. See you guys next time.